Hello my friends, what's up? The Dutchman, Ruben Buis here. Glad you could make it. Yeah, it happened. After 13 years. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. I can, you know, nostalgia. When I was growing up, I wasn't that big of a tool fan. Um, I had Enema on tape. Lateralis uh, at the CD, I think. That's about it, and never paid that much attention to them. And then I stopped listening to them all entirely. Then I started my YouTube channel. So many were people were suggesting tracks, and I thought, yeah, you know, let's. See. I haven't listened to them in ages. Maybe I'm missing out on something. Maybe I just don't didn't understand it when I was young. Maybe I was young and foolish, full of myself. <laughs> I rediscovered Tool, so to say, and now they're one of my favorite uh, bands of all time. Wonderful cliche. And now we have Fair Inoculum. Or at least, you know, it was released in 2019, after 13 years. What do I think about the album? I can remember, you know, I did a reaction video for Fear Inoculum, the track itself. And I thought, hey, you know, you know so I was sitting there, you know, trying to take it all in. And I, uh, you know, I didn't feel disappointed at all, but, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. Hmm. Now that I listen to it like uh, 50 times, no. it, it is always such a cliche to say that, uh, that a track or an album is, is a grower. But with this album, <coughs> whoa. Um, the title track itself, you know, start, the album starts out really shallow, but it's so methodical. And the f immediately the first track proves that this is not Keenan's uh, album, to be perfectly uh, honest. I think it's more of uh, um, Danny Carey is the main star here. The drumming immediately is so hypnotizing. It's so well crafted. Danny Carey proves that he is absolutely one of the best drummers in his field. When we're talking about the genre of progressive metal, rock, whatever. And Maynard Keenan takes the back seat. And what I mean by that, it's it's not, he's very laid back, very concentrated. He, he doesn't have that, uh, at least the, begin, the entire beginning of the album, he doesn't really have that screen or that aggression in him. He's more like a wise old man telling his, uh, telling his story. And it really works. Uh, on this uh, on this album, he lost a little bit of his, his uh, aggression, but I think that's okay for a man his age. And I think it's very healthy. I think it's very mature. I think he shows that the entire band has really grown. Fear Inoculum is a great way to start uh, to start the album and the second track, Thoma, which is one of the best tracks they've ever made. Again, if you've seen. Uh, the live video, which focuses on Danny Carey's drumming. Enough said. It's incredible. I think you can... Uh, Danny Carey is really top tier. To again, uh, maybe Neil Peart. For the rest, uh, you know, forget about it. The great strength of this album is also maybe its weakness because you really have to. This is you don't do the album justice because you know listening to it when you're not fo you're fo when you're not focused. It really deserves your complete attention to just you know sit back, listen to it, hear all the hear the drums and the guitar playing and the entire rhythm of the tracks changing, evolving. It's. Insane. And for the, you know, all the, the main tracks, as ex, uh, except for Chocolate, uh, I forget. It's a really a tongue breaker. Uh, chocolate Chip Trip. And that's the only one which, uh, under the, the 10 minutes. All of them are above. Yeah, insane when you think about it. It really deserves your uh, attention. A lot of uh, the, the tracks, uh, Invincible and Sending, were leaked. Um, as in, you know, they were already being played at live shows. And after you listen to them, the studio albums. When you hear Maynard says about you know that he would that you know that he's still a warrior, but he's still trying to remain relevant. It's you know, that's so what he did. 
absolutely one of the best tracks on the album. I like all the voices. I like all the tracks. Calling voices is uh, finally Maynard gets a little bit of his aggression back when he says, "Don't put your finger uh, at me." It is quite right. What what I miss, but you know what? I don't think it's necessary about this album. I don't know. That's the, the that's the bonus uh, ver version. There are they are on the LP. Is of course you know the intermissions. I was never a big fan of the other intermissions. We're talking about uh, the other uh, two albums out here. They feel really redundant and, and totally not necessary. Don't expect it, again, you know, the point of it all. I know that they're, you know, trying to, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's it's like a pause between the between the tracks, you know, so you can catch your breath. But I don't think they add anything. With the chocolate chip trip, which is an amazing uh, drumming, and they have played this track live, but. It, it's like a kind of an electrical buzz going through the entire track, which is also not necessary, which 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 is a pity. But when it's played live, you know it comes. You know I can understand. I understand the track, but again on the album, would have been a worse album if it would have been excluded. When we have Tempest, they're uh, 15 minutes and 43 seconds uh, epic. Probably, when we're talking about uh, the guitar playing, it is probably the best we've heard in the uh, entire 2000, 2019, I think. It goes on, it goes on and on. It's like an explosion. Um, Adam Jones is absolutely phenomenal here. And as I said, good luck finding, uh, trying to find better uh, guitar playing in 2019. It's a lot of instrumental pieces and, and also Maynard has a little bit of that fight left in him. It goes on for a little bit too long. But, uh, again, 15 minutes, it would have been better if it was more, a little bit more slimmed down to like 10 minutes or something. I don't think it would lose any quality. But it's a great, it's a fantastic closer and really my jaw absolutely dropped hearing that. The instrumental pieces proves that the tool is you know, absolutely one, in a, uh, one of a kind. Is it their best album? That's absolutely debatable. I don't think so. Was it worth the wait? Oh, hell yes. Oh, hell yes. I've seen Tool twice. <laughs> That's always one of my dreams, you know that. Not, not always. <laughs> No, that would be contradictory. No, uh, it was my dream, so, you know, since I started the channel and then when I rediscovered them, it was really, it became really a dream to see these guys live just one more time. And I got two times, so life's good. It's a great album. It has its flaws, but it's still four and a half stars and absolutely one of the best albums uh, released in 2019, easily. And a lot of people thought they were never going to get another great Tool album. Luckily, you know, sometimes good thing happen. Good things happen uh, in our lives. <laughs> Fantastic, four and a half uh, stars. It uh, sounds uh, great on uh, vinyl, uh, by the way. It's two, uh, two, uh, it's a double uh, vinyl album. Can fully recommend it. And now uh, a lot of people aren't aren't you know familiar with two at all. If you're not, if, I am, I don't know if it's maybe the best place to begin, but certainly uh, included my friends. Include it in your life. Four and a half stars. My friends, thanks so much for my watching. Agree, disagree, what are, you, what are your thoughts about this uh, album? Hope to see these guys live again soon. That time will go. My friends, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, click on the like button. Subscribe if you like what I do. If you want to, you can support me on Patreon. That would be awesome. I promise I will do this for the rest of my life. See you soon, friends. Bye-bye.